Hello everybody and welcome to a new grammar tutorial by Bildung Interaktiv. Now this video is actually designed to tell you where to use a gerund or an infinitive in a sentence. And here is the overview. We start with the gerund and first we have the definition for you and the formation. Then what functions the gerunds can actually have in the sentences. And of course constructions followed by gerunds. The next one is the infinitive, so we have some constructions that are usually followed by the infinitive and then please allow me a final word on the topic. So here we go and let's start with the gerund definition and formation. Let's have a look at some gerunds first. Shopping is fun, shopping is a gerund here. I love traveling, also traveling is a gerund. To motivate, she's good at motivating people. Motivating is the gerund and to wash. Our dog loves being washed, which is actually being a gerund used in the passive. So definition and formation are actually not so complicated. The gerund is a verbal that ends in ing, shopping, traveling, motivating, being washed. And it's used in the sentence as a noun. Let's have a look at the sentences again. Shopping is fun. Let's just put in a normal noun like tennis is fun. Okay, that works. I love traveling. I love tennis. Perfect. It's a noun. She's good at motivating people. She's good at tennis. Perfect. Our dog loves being washed. Our dog loves tennis. Okay, good. That doesn't make sense, but grammatically speaking, it's perfectly all right. And please remember, it can take an active as well as a passive form. Shopping is fun. I love traveling. She's good at motivating people. This is active. Our dog loves being washed is passive. So the gerund is a verbal that ends in ing and building the ing form just isn't complicated. You take your verb and you throw an ing at the end. There's just a couple of things that you want to remember. Let's have a look at those. To lie, lying, and to tie, tying. Please remember, IE at the end of the verb becomes Y in the ing form. So we have to stop stopping and to sit sitting. You can actually see the double consonant which you have after the short vowel. So stop has a short O and sit has a short I. And don't forget, write writing, come coming. The silent E is often dropped in the ink form. There's only very few exceptions where the E actually stays in. All right, let's continue. What functions can the gerund have in a sentence? It can be put into the sentence as a subject or as an object. Watching movies is great. Tennis is great. I am great here. The gerund is the subject. I avoid being seen by my students on weekends. I is the subject here, so the being seen, which is actually the gerund in the passive, must be the object. So both subject and object are possible. Let's continue. Now this may seem strange to you as a couple of funny sentences, but the gerund can have its own subject. Let's start with a construction I don't like, which can of course have a gerund. I don't like playing table tennis is perfectly all right. You can actually say, I don't like you wasting energy or I don't like your wasting energy. Now grammatically speaking, is all this is correct and it's also very good English. The same with the third person. I don't like him wasting energy. I don't like his wasting energy. Now, whether you use the objective pronoun, which is him, or the possessive, his, is actually totally up to you. When you need a subject for the gerund, you can actually use both. You just want to remember that the possessive just sounds more formal, so maybe you want to stick with the objective pronoun. Now, all these sentences actually sound quite funny, so we have some more examples here. My mom doesn't like me watching TV all night, or my mom doesn't like my watching TV all night. Both are perfectly all right. I don't mind you coming late. I don't mind your coming late. I don't see an advantage in him 
being promoted or in his being promoted, him being the pronoun, the objective pronoun, and his being the possessive, or I don't see an advantage in Sarah being promoted, which actually sounds all right, doesn't it? Or in Sarah's being promoted, where the possessive Sarah's being promoted sounds more formal. I'm pleased about us being on time. Sounds, sounds okay, doesn't it? Pleased about our being on time is more formal. We're, we're all worried about them not calling, or we're all worried about my friends not calling, which is okay, and we're all worried about their not calling, which is grammatically perfectly all right, but again, more formal. All right, and now, of course, we have constructions followed by gerund. There aren't too many rules, but there's at least one consistent rule, and this is please use the gerund after prepositions. I'm good at tennis, at is your preposition, I'm good at playing tennis. I'm afraid of the dark, of being the preposition, I'm afraid of being left alone in the dark, which is a gerund in the passive. Or I'm interested in politics, in being your preposition, I'm interested in writing short stories, for example. So good at, afraid of, interested in, adjective, preposition, and then gerund. And here we go again, instead of, where off is your preposition here, instead of helping his little brother, Mark was watching television. Instead of actually being a conjunction. By preposition, by leaning out of the window, he was able to grab her hand and pull her back in. And there's always the risk of losing in a contest. Now, off is your preposition, risk is a noun, so here you have noun, preposition, gerund. And this also goes with a choice between being a preposition, flying to London Heathrow or Stansted, choice, noun, preposition, and then flying, which is the gerund. And it also works with a verb, I wanted to congratulate you on making such a good speech. Congratulate, verb, on preposition. And the firm specializes in designing websites, verb, preposition, and gerund. Congratulate on making a speech and specializing in designing websites. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so much for the gerund. Let's move on to the infinitive. Now, actually, to form the infinitive is easy, so, so we skip this and just move on right away to a couple of rules and when to use the infinitive. You can use the infinitive after question words, for example, in indirect speech. Please notice the can, because sometimes the gerund here is also possible. I asked my math teacher how to solve this algebra problem. I asked, of course, is an indirect speech, and how is the question word. It's not a preposition. I asked my math teacher how to solve this problem. And I didn't know what to do. Again, we have the question word here, followed by the infinitive. I didn't know what doing just doesn't, that doesn't sound right, okay, so it's wrong. And a second little rule we can actually give you here is use the infinitive after want and would like. Do you want me to shut the window? Do you want me to shut the window? Do you want me shutting the window is not correct. And you have to say, I would like to study Italian. Can of course say, I like studying Italian, but with the would in, I would like, it's would like to study. So much for a couple of rules on the infinitive. And now please allow me a final word on this topic. It's actually impossible to press this problematic of infinitive and gerund into a set of fixed rules. There's just too many possibilities. For example, the words like like, hate, and prefer, they can actually have both. And also to stop. I like, I hate going shopping, which is perfectly all right. It's just the, the gerund after I hate. And of course, you can say, I hate to tell you this. So we can also have the infinitive, both having a little bit of a different meaning here. You can say, I stopped smoking. Or you can say, I stopped to smoke, for the first one being like the habit, I stopped smoking. And the second one is just the next thing that I 
didn't do. I stopped to smoke, okay? And so, can I actually say it's quite difficult to give you a rule here when to use which is just something that you have to feel. In the, in the internet, on the internet, when you Google this, you, they actually give you lots of lists with adjectives and verbs and nouns followed by gerund, but there's just too many of them. So forget about all the word lists. Oh, this won't help you. So the question, of course, is what can you do? Well, the only thing is you can actually develop a feeling for when to use which form and in order to do this, please read English books, watch English movies, listen to English songs, of course, the, do our exercises on this topic. And always, when you do this, have your inner Englishman turned on because he will then maybe remember what needs to be put in. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is it for the gerund and infinitive. You can actually move on and do the exercises. They are right here on YouTube. You can also go to our homepage, www.bildunginteraktiv.de. There's lots of more videos and exercises. Bye-bye and see you around.